most of the time. <laughs> Before the crap came today. Are you going to put the one inside? <laughs> we are live. Okay, so welcome everybody. Welcome to um, November 29th special meeting of the Hadley Select Board. Um, this is a continuation meeting, so just going to read a brief statement to get everybody up to speed on where we are today. So, uh, the reason for this meeting is um, the Hadley Select Board received several complaints about Mr. Donald Pipchinski's actions at the Young Men's Club of Hadley on October 15th, and the board called for an executive session on October 26th. Um, at Mr. Pipchinski's request, the board rescheduled the executive session for November 1st, 2016. On November 1st, the board convened an executive session, um, and Mr. Pipchinski stated that he wanted the matter discussed in open session and that request was granted. Um, by letter to the town, counsel for Mr. Pipchinski, Mr. Thomas John Rook, had requested another rescheduling in order to prepare, which request was granted to November 9th, 2016. The board held a meeting on November 9th, at which meeting the board agreed to reschedule to tonight. So the board now opens this meeting in open session as requested by Mr. Pipchinski. And the topic of tonight's meeting will focus on the events leading up to and including October 15th. The board expects to consider the written record concerning the events. The board does not expect to call witnesses. So here is a summary of the allegations concerning October 15th. Uh, the complaints allege that Mr. Kipchinski was working driving buses to transport students from Amherst to the Young Men's Club of Hadley and back again on Saturday, October 15th where a sponsored event called Oktoberfest was taking place. Shortly after 3 p.m., Mr. Pipchinski entered the grounds by showing a badge and claiming to be a police commissioner and not paying the cover charge of $40. Mr. Pipchinski was confronted by club personnel, um, specifically Mr. John Michkowski Jr., as Mr. Pipchinski's membership with the club had been terminated and he was asked to leave the grounds. Mr. Pipchinski claimed that he could be at the private event because he was a police commissioner and he had the right to inspect alcohol service. When spoken to by a Hadley police officer, Sergeant uh, Mitch Cook, Mr. Pipchinski continued to insist that he was a police commissioner and that he had a right to inspect alcohol service. Mr. Pipchinski left the grounds after speaking with the police officer, Sergeant Cook. The select board then received a verbal complaint, two letters of complaint, and a statement by Sergeant Cook. Um, so that brings us up to where we left last time, um, and at that point, um, Mr. Pipchinski and his counsel asked us to um, move this to another meeting uh, this evening so that they would have an opportunity to uh, comment and call witnesses. So, On behalf of Mr. Pipchinski, Attorney Thomas Rook, uh, my recollection, and if I'm reviewing the video of the last meeting, was a member of your board uh, requested that the witnesses be brought forward. 
and that they wanted a continuance to get those witnesses present. Um, and the board granted that request. Um, I'm now learning that there will be no witnesses present. I think Mr. Pajinski has the right to confront his um, accusers. Uh, this board obviously uh, thinks differently. We had an opportunity to issue summons, and I received a letter from your counsel uh, that that was not being done. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, we are left here with the uh, written statements by several individuals. We don't have the right to confront them, to cross-examine them with the due process afforded the Articles of the Massachusetts, uh, Articles of the Constitution, the U.S. Constitution. So we are prepared to proceed and continue this hearing, not continue the hearing, but to conclude this hearing tonight. Um, I have some documentation that supports my client's uh, position uh, that he is, in fact, a police commissioner, and I'm going to pass out to you what is the mission statement of the Board of Select Persons. I've highlighted the permanent areas that clearly delineate that according to the mission statement of this board on page two, as a member of this board, Mr. Pinsky is in fact a police commissioner. I'm also going to provide you with a photocopy of the badge of commissioner that he was awarded by this town some 20 years ago when he was first elected to this board. Which he should have turned in at that time. Well, I'm also told that you should have turned yours in too, George. I didn't resign. I didn't, I didn't terminate my well, select board chair. The fact that he is currently a member of the board, I'm going to suggest to you. That the town statement that is issued, the mission statement, clearly indicates, and I quote on page two, which is highlighted in yellow for convenience. The members of the select board are police commissioners and fire commissioners, and then and in these capacities provide departmental oversight, policies and procedures, budgeting, and hiring firing functions for the town's police and fire departments. The third paragraph reads on in many cases. The select board is a licensing authority regarding business-related affairs to this town, to this other town. So I'm going to respectfully suggest to you that my client's assertion that he was a member of the police commission is outlined in your own documentation you provide to the public. Your mission statement clearly states that you, as members of this board, are police commissioners. I conclude my comments here by stating but I think this is a frivolous matter that's being taken up by this board. Um, it's taking up positive energy that this board could be generating and spending uh, and exercising to the good citizens of this community. Your own time and positive energies, not to mention the expense involved, what it's costing to, uh, to prosecute this case forward. Uh, in my personal opinion, uh, this is something of inside quabbling. It's almost childish. You're taking this time and energy away from a man who has invested 45 years of his life to the town of Hadley. When he was 14 years old to the present time, he and his family have committed an awful lot of positive energy to do things in a positive motion for this town. And we're quabbling over a $40 admission fee because he claimed or asserted he was a police commissioner had a right to be on the grounds, which I would suggest he certainly did, as any one of you would. And you're taking this time and energy and expense against the taxpayers that could be better spent, whether it's in the police services, the fire services, the school departments, the DPW, any other municipal um, administrative body and uh, agency in this town would be better served. With that, I'm going to conclude my commentary and ask Mr. Brzezinski to read a brief statement to you. I felt compelled to explain to you, the citizens of Hadley, how this all came about. <clears throat> it started this April when I was elected to the position that appears to be a political attack on me and my family's name, who have contributed so much to the town of Hadley over many generations. Hearing some of the statements by my colleagues during the recent hearings, perhaps they should look at themselves and ask themselves if they are acting in a manner that represents what an elected servant of the community should in questioning another member's actions. As a reminder to everyone concerned, let me just say, there have been no charges brought against me except that I was doing my job. 
I think everybody on the board should read our mission statement and realize it was just acting as an individual member of the board and I felt I acted appropriately at the meetings and other functions where the board appears. I have been an employee of the town since I was 14, painting fire hydrants for the water commission and shoveling the snow around them in the winter. I also served the town for 20 years as a volunteer fireman. <coughs> Our family's hay, hay barn housed the first fire truck in North Hadley until the station was built. I also served many years on the finance committee and working with other members, had a balanced budget each year, even during most difficult financial times. I also went to implemented the first phase of our stabilization, suggesting that we should cut off the reservoir, and that allowed $45,000 to go into our stabilization fund that we started, and today we have about $2.5 million as a safeguard. <clears throat> I served the town as a select board member three terms. During my first term, I was instrumental in establishing the stabilization account. Also during my tenure on the board, we voted to have a bike path built. Today it is the number one recreational area in the Pioneer Valley. I also was very instrumental in working with Mr. Mike Pawatka in establishing the APR program, which I'm very proud of. Today we're the number one community in Massachusetts for protected agricultural land. During my second term, I lobbied to purchase the land for the new elementary school as well as the public safety complex. Today, we have a great elementary school and public safety complex that attract families and businesses to our town. During that time, I worked vigorously to achieve a $400,000 sewer grant, which opened up our eastern boundaries to new businesses such as Home Depot, the nursing home on North Maple Street, and West Mass, which has a great deal of companies in it. Without this grant, none of the construction would have happened. While away from the select board, I worked on many town committees, such as co-chairing the Hopkins Academy Renovation Committee. We were going for full reimbursement of $3.2 million for the academy, but the grant was cut at the last minute by the state to $1.8 million. In my 50 plus years of involvement in municipal government, my character has never been questioned. I just voted to, was voted to represent the Hampshire County Selectmen's Association as their voice in municipal affairs in Boston. In conclusion, I just want this to end for both myself and the taxpayers of Hadley. It has been very costly to everyone concerned, and I feel as though totally unnecessary to bring this before the town and urge my colleagues to reach a decision on this immediately. Thank you. So, um, well, first of all, I think it's always good to find common ground, and I think that um, I can comfortably speak on behalf of everyone here that we're all in agreement that this is an utterly colossal waste of town's time and resources. Um, but moving forward from there, one question I just have um, that doesn't need to be answered is I'm looking at the, the mission statement, and I think um, part of the operative here is the, the concept of enforcement. Um, and acting in the capacity as an enforcement officer. And that, that is not within the purview of this, this writing, at least as far as I can see, but we can address that with town council. It's not Madam Chairman, uh, and I think it's agreed upon that my client was not attempting to enforce anything. He clearly stated, I am not a police officer. I'm here as a police commissioner making observations. So he was not attempting to effect an arrest. He was not attempting to assert his authority that he had powers of arrest. He merely repeated himself that I am a police commissioner, I have a right to be here. I think the, the bigger issue here is that we should put this to rest. All right, we don't need this going through the Ethics Commission. There's already one matter down there. Um, and this is only to, it's, it's only going to, uh, that's the word I'm looking for, it's only going to magnify itself. So I urge the board to take a vote tonight, not to send this to the Ethics Commission. The badge has been thrown away, he's no longer in possession of it. I think we've all learned a lesson here with respect to what is the position of members on this board. We should try to work together for the better of the town and the citizens and the taxpayers of the town. Not divide. Our nation's being divided, it's being torn apart. A small town like Hadley should work together to unify and stay together for the benefit of our community. Okay. So Certainly. I urge you to take your vote 
Yeah, that's what we're saying. I certainly appreciate the, the sentiment, but I think the other thing we need to take into account here is we also have a responsibility to the residents of Hadley. And to the extent any one of us is acting or conducting ourselves in such a manner that those residents feel that they are being um, bullied or that there's some sort of abuse of authority or power occurring, we can't overlook that. And as much as I would like to turn the other cheek, I'm only speaking for myself, not my colleagues, I don't feel that that's um, a place I can find myself right now. So just, you know, I also want to be very clear, and Donald, we certainly appreciate the service that you've provided to the town of Hadley and the number of years you've been involved. I mean, it's twice as long as I have, I know that. But we're not here to impugn or deny any good that you've done for the town. We're here merely to discuss behavior that is not in concert with our code of conduct that we've received complaints about. And that is the sole matter in front of this board tonight. So this isn't, again, uh, a personal attack of any kind, but we've received complaints. We need to react to those complaints. Um, and again, I, I'm just gonna restate what I did last time. My primary concern is that whether intended or not, there may have been the appearance of um, retaliation, given the fact that there were some issues between Mr. Pipchinski and the Young Men's Club prior to this incident. And to your point, we have already had two executive sessions with Mr. Pipchinski about behavior that was not in concert with the Code of Conduct. <clears throat> this is a pattern of performance, and up until now, I have not heard any acknowledgement of any wrongdoing on Mr. Pipchinski's part. So with that, I will, that's my piece for the moment. And my fellow board members, would you like to speak? I guess I'd like to say, Madam Chair, you're in violation again. Once you go back and you're talking about the past, we're not supposed to be talking about anything in the past. You've just violated the Ethics Commission rules and regulations once again. I don't believe that that's true. And actually, your own counsel referred to another matter before the Ethics Commission. Um, I didn't mention that. But um, and I have had conversation, just so you know, with the Attorney General's office and the Ethics Commission prior to the meeting tonight. So. Does anybody else have anything that they want to say? I'd like to reiterate also that um, nothing has been uh, said about your performance uh, in past service, Donald, about uh, your contribution to the town. But the problem with the badge is that you misrepresented of, of what it was actually used for. It, it's not that purpose for what we have it or had it. Um, and I think that any board member here, past or present, that has had the badge has never uh, brought it out in public to any, um, been to several functions uh, before this year. I haven't been to, to anything at the Young Men's Club in, in, in quite some time. But at the Legion or anywhere else that there's been a party of anything, it, nobody has ever brought out their badge and said, I'm a police commissioner. Um, and that's. I know that's under our, our, it's not even part of our purview to go into these places and see if they're, um, it's, if they're doing the right thing by serving liquor or anything. Yes, we do grant the licenses, but that's not our, it's up to the police to go in and see if they're after hours or serving under age or anything. It's not the police commissioner's purview. So it's been, I think you totally represented the fact of what that badge represented and what it allowed you to do. I guess my answer to you, Ms. Chungalo, is when the town administrator asked all badges to be turned in, why didn't you turn yours in? And you still have it. I the reason why I didn't turn mine in, I was living in Belchertown at that time for four years, and I was never told to turn it in. No one ever told me, and I did not <clears> know <throat> until <throat> recently. But you never turned yours in. You ride around town with it on your dash. We're, that's, we're not here to talk about Ms. Chung, but we're here to well, talk Well, we're talking about the badge. Excuse me. Yes. Why does she Excuse not me. turn her badge in? That's all I want to know. Answer that question. Excuse me. That's all I want to know. So the point being here that the badge was used not once, but if this, again, if this were the first issue coming before the board, I honestly don't think we'd all be sitting here tonight. With, with I, I, the, the issue is specific to the badge that this is the second time that the badge has been used and I believe that it was very clear the first time that that was not to happen again 
and yet it was pulled out a second time. That's the concern, Donald. I think we and can go back to all the issues, Madam Chair, and we could go to the first one when I received my reprimand, and it will clearly show it was political by you and what was transpired. I would love to bring up all the other incidents because it would prove what is happening to me, but we're not supposed to be talking of the past events. Well, I can remember when um, I think Mr. Kevich was on the board at the time and also I think uh, Gloria the Gloria DeFabio was on the board, that we made a ruling that no badges were to be issued after that point. That's correct. Um, not that the badges were asked to be turned in, but they were not to be issued to any further select board member. Um, is that correct, Chief? That I, you I wasn't here for that. You weren't being think. given, but I can tell you that to my knowledge, nothing else has been issued. No, no, I haven't. You know, there was another incident with a badge, too, that he waved it after being stopped by an officer for speeding. Mm -hmm. The only thing he received was, please take the ethics test and nothing else. And he was in clear violation of abuse with the badge. He, oh, no, that badge was immediately taken away by I don't care. I'm saying officer. what happened and with he, the badge. I don't he, care where it is today. It's irrelevant. He wasn't even a select board member at it, the time. He still had the badge and he used it. Well, it didn't get turned in just like yours didn't get there, turned in. There's, there are so many badges out there right now, Donald. We don't even know who have them. In getting away from the badges for a minute. Yes. <clears throat> My point is this is the year 2016, not 1960. We talked about a code of, of conduct because we don't want people acting independently. This is a board of five people. We make decisions based on five people having nothing to do with any individuals. That's why we're speaking of a code of conduct. If people are unhappy with anything that's occurring out there, you bring it back to this board, we discuss it, we talk about it, we rule on it, and then it goes forward with either a change to it or not a change to it. We cannot be running around conducting ourselves as though we are the decision makers on any particular issues. Anything that needs to be addressed needs to be brought back to this board and addressed professionally, whatever it is. We, we're not changing anything individually. We don't act individually. We act as a group. And that's why we were elected to a board member of five, not individuals. And that's what we need to get back to. That's why the code of conduct was so important to stress and adopt and make sure that we were all working with it. And that's where I want to see us from this point to go forward. John, you want to say anything? Well, the town has been split for a long time, you know. <clears throat> and the 200 or 400 people that voted again have a lot to say a lot of times. I, I've got a lot of people calling me. What are you doing? How come you're sitting there doing nothing, not saying anything? I'm like, well, you know, this this issue shouldn't. I agree with Donald. I mean, this issue shouldn't even. Be. There, the, the the two past issues. I know I'm not supposed to be talking about, but they're they're they've already been handled. Although it is the third time, you know, and he had gotten rid of the badge, then there should be no more conversation here tonight. You know, this should be over. And from this point on, I think it's quite clear that if anything does happen, then it's going to be active. And so I think, I mean, I want to come back to, to again, to the responsibility of the board to... You know, if there's a complaint, it, it goes to the police department first. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, it don't come to us, mm -hmm. and it's investigated. You know, if, if there was a problem and the, the police felt uncomfortable doing it, you came to the board and two people went to, to investigate something anywhere, then that would be different. I mean, we have things going on at the Common, we have things going on at, in, at UMass, at the Mullen Center, at the football stadium, and some of us are there, some of the citizens are there. And, and this thing, ha this happens all over the place, you know. But this particular incident has happened twice at one establishment, you know, and whether it's right or wrong, I don't know. And just to come back to the fact that, you know, the, the badge is one thing, but to me, 
I'm not happy about it, but that's the least of my concerns because I have to ask myself what compels somebody to act in a certain manner. And what I'm hoping you recognize is that the perception, and in reading through these complaints and the verbal complaints we've received, is that this is somewhat of a bullying tactic of, again, an abuse of power of somebody holding themselves out as an elected official and implying that they have certain authorities and powers over others. And again, I feel that as a board, we need to be very conscious of how that might be coming across to the residents of town. And it's not okay. It's not in concert with the code of conduct. And that's why we tried to get the code of conduct in early to head anything like this off. And again, I'm concerned because I haven't heard any acknowledgement on your part, Donald, that you even recognize how this could be perceived by others. I mean, I understand you're talking about what your own motivation was. I'm not going to question that. But. Well, now, if anybody would be sitting in this position, Donald, over the last four years, I've ran for two terms now, I thought it would be me. With all the conflicts I have with the DPW and the fire department, and everything else I'm involved with, I, I figured I would have, have had a conflict by now. But for four years now, I've kept my nose pretty clean, actually, for the most part. <laughs> and, and everybody's laughing. You but, know, but, it, but it's true, you know? I, I try to be as open-minded as I can on both sides of, of the, the conversation all the time, you know? You know, I don't think it's fair, Madam Chair, you sitting there accusing me of all these things without anyone being privy of what really happened in all these incidents. There's two sides to the story. You're only telling your side. And oh, believe me, if everybody heard both sides, I would be completely vindicated. You're going to find out when ethics takes care of this first one, you're just wasting their time. They don't even, the worst scenario that could happen to me is a private letter back to me that I will only get that will say, please do not do it again, which I've already stopped doing. And this is what you're causing. You're causing the town $600 an hour just to listen to this stupid testimony. Who is going to pay for this? The taxpayers. Ridiculous. Except this is the third time we've been addressing the exact same issue. And when is it? It is not, Mr. Dobb. Fine. The three incidents are completely different. And there hasn't been one charge against me, Mr. Devine. Where is the charge? You tell me. What am I being charged for? There is none. Well, for one, it's just plain and simple. We wouldn't, we wouldn't be here, Donald, if you hadn't done it. I mean, that's there has to be a charge for the ethics. Either the police or someone has to charge me. Not just your vindictive manner being political. Madam Chairman, bring it to a vote, please. Pardon? Bring it to a vote. Um, I'm going to wait and see if anybody else has anything that they, they have to add. So, so you're not acknowledging any wrongdoing, is that what I'm hearing? I was doing my job. Simple as that. But I just want to make sure I understand where you're coming from. And I'm apologetic for it ever happening. I didn't want it to happen. But if everybody heard every story, they would understand why it happened, and I would be vindicated, guaranteed. Well, we, we could certainly read uh, the reports from Mr. Cook or uh, other member that was also at the... Um, That's going back again, and we can't do that, Joyce. I'm talking about. No, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about the one from the young men's club about about that. I mean, this this is what's at the present. Yeah, and right. then I would have to get into everything that went on there, the kids in the street, the kids throwing up <laughs> on my buses, the kids urinating on the buses. I don't think we want to tell that here tonight. Did you report any of that, Donald? No, we didn't. Our bus company didn't want to do anything with it. And I but kept my mouth shut. That's why you were the driver of the bus. If the kids wouldn't be driving, 
a vehicle. They were carted back and forth to the university so that they would not be. I mean, your company took that upon themselves to put these kids that had been drinking onto the bus and take them back to the university. It's not our responsibility to check the kids for drinks getting on the bus but every time they get on. It's the responsibility of the people having the events. And there were no... Um, they weren't driving. There were no police reports indicating that there were any issues with the party that day. But at any rate... Um, Cheryl? Yes? I just, I'd like to make a motion to uh, move this hearing to a close with uh, no finding at this point. And we'll leave it at that. Are others comfortable with no finding? No. 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 So, is, there, is there a second? Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a second on? I'll second this motion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Aye. 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 For the kind of clarity of the record, what was that vote again? Aye. I will to bring it to a close. Bring it to a close. Bring it to a close. You voted it to a So, I mean, it would seem that, um, you know, again, I think that the, the written the written <coughs> complaints are there in concert with each other. They're not in conflict with each other. Um, and it's a continuation of behavior that we've seen previously. Um, again, with no acknowledgement at any point along the way that there was any issue with the behavior. So I think that the range of possibilities and and John just stated one, would be to close the hearing with no finding. We could close the hearing and take it under advisement and reconvene at a future point in time. We could issue another letter of reprimand. We could refer this to the Ethics Commission, or we could move to a public censure. I think that's the range. It's really the only authority that this board has. David, did I miss anything? I didn't. I don't think so. Does anyone else have was, an opinion? Was there a recommendation? No. <coughs> Joe or Mr. Jingle? Oh. I know. Uh, Joe or Mr. Jingle? No, actually. No. Yeah. So. No, I think it's, it's really up to us how we feel this fits in relative to, um, as Jerry said, how we want to move forward as a board. I recommend we send it to the Ethics Commission and let a completely independent party review these facts as well and render a decision. I second that. I second that. Okay, so there's a motion made and seconded to refer this incident as well to the Ethics Commission and uh, let them render an opinion. Okay, discussion on that? Okay, put that one to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. All right, so then I believe that we're over the matter for now. Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. <laughs>